Folks, the roller coaster ride continues as far as the stock market's concerned. So your Federal Reserve, they cut their rates this morning, as anticipated, 50 basis points. Uh, and, and, and what they really wanted to do is sort of help uh, investor psyche, if you will. And it did momentarily. We rocketed higher, and then we gave it all away. Meanwhile, Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin, uh, well, he applauded the cut, uh, and he says that the outbreak will have a short-lived impact on our economy. Uh, and, it, and it's very different than the financial crisis. And we want to juxtapose those two things, bring in a CIO of, of the Bonson Group, David Bonson. David Nelson and, and Danny Hughes have come back to, with this as well. David Bonson, let me start with you, though. Um, uh, let's just start, you know, with the, this morning, the anticipation, Wall Street anticipation of a, Fed, of a Fed rate cut. We got it. One of the oldest adages on Wall Street is sell the news. We saw that this morning as well. And it feels like it puts us back at square one. Well, I don't think that this thing ever had anything to do with monetary policy. The idea that the present panic and hysteria around the uncertainty of coronavirus was itself a monetary <coughs> phenomena is deeply flawed. I certainly understand their reasoning. Um, the best precedent I could think of is after 9-11, which was a categorically different event as well, but they obviously tried to add more liquidity to the markets that way. But ultimately, they're being front run, okay? The futures market is telling them how much they want in rate cuts, and now they're looking for even further rate cuts. And that's what happens when you go down this path. When you're reliant on stimulus and monetary policy, it's never enough. And they're going to end up going to a QE4, and that's what it's going to end up having to be, is a precedent in our country that the Fed is there to offer whatever liquidity and favorable rates capital markets want. So it's very so, distressing so for the future. So, David, the, the tail, essentially, the tail is wagging a dog. In this case, the tail is the markets, right? The, the forces that move the markets. Uh, and by the way, this has been going on long, even before President Trump was in office. And I remember when Yellen finally succumbed, uh, and she, she hiked rates 25 basis points. It was December. Uh, that January, the first two weeks, were the worst two weeks for the market. She quickly changed her mind. It feels like every Federal Reserve official, chairman, or chairperson, David Bonson, no matter what intentions they come into the job with, always succumb to what Wall Street wants. Is that, and you're saying that's going to lead us to dire consequences? I'm saying it's going to lead to a mispricing of assets. It's going to lead to a distortion of risk in capital markets. Absolutely. You're exactly right. I trace it back to 1998 with Alan Greenspan when he went and cut rates in the midst of the Russian uh, currency issue and long-term capital management and some of those things, when the economy was growing over 5% real GDP at the time. And, and yet the stock market had dropped 20% and it immediately recovered. So it's been going on for well over 20 years and the markets believe the Fed's gonna be there. Today they came in with a uh, cut before their next meeting, but now everyone's wondering what's going to be the next cut. And that's the problem. It's never good enough. David Bonson, uh, one thing I talked about yesterday, I want to get your thoughts on, on Wall Street's version of Main Street investors. In other words, uh, the notion that the individual investor must be, must, well, let's talk about the will of emotions, right? That they have to capitulate, they have to be discouraged, they have to have dismay, that they have got to be totally annihilated and out of this market for the coast to be clear. I mean, some of that feels like Wall Street arrogance because every investor I talk to, I would say 90% are saying they're calm. They're calmer than the news, they're calmer than Wall Street, and they're calmer than the markets. Do you want them to panic? Of course I don't. I, I think, and believe me, I work with private wealth clients, Charles. We do uh, a lot of work to make sure that our clients stay calm and understand our perspective. Behavioral finance drives investor results. But I do think it's fair to say from history that there has often been a significant amount of flows out of mutual funds from smaller investors right before markets hit bottoms. That contrarian indicator has generally been there. And it's been there on the other side too when there's a big bubble, there's a lot of euphoria from smaller investors. But I agree with you. I think a lot of Main Street is much smarter than it was during dot com and even when it was that it, the, smarter with a housing crisis, okay? Right. The whole bubble there. So right. ultimately there are still contrarian indicators you have to look to, All but right. I believe that we've done a good job in educating they, the investing public. There's David, no, I don't know anyone on Wall Street, Charles, that wants people to feel pain. They're David, more looking David and to Danny, patterns. We got to leave it there.